Hi Claire's, welcome to my channel, Court the Nurse Realtor, and I am Court the Nurse Realtor. If you are new to my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you are an oldie but a goldie, hey girl, hey, hey boy, hey, welcome back to my channel. I miss y'all. Okay, so you know if you see me in these scrubs and a stethoscope, this is going to be a nurse related video. And this video in particular, I um, started, I decided to do a new nurse series because after speaking to some of my nursing colleagues, um, some that are preceptors or nurse educators, Educators, they say that they're finding that nurses, new nurses are not critically thinking. So I decided to number one do a new nurse series and this video is in particular is about critical thinking. So if you are a nursing student, if you are a new nurse, if you are like an older nurse and you like child need a refresher or if you want to just be plain old nosy, go ahead and stay tuned to this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and ring my bell. Ring my bell, my bell, ring a ling a ling, ring my bell so you can stay notified of my weekly videos. Okay y'all, as y'all nursing big sister, when I heard from numerous seasoned nurses that the younger nurses, or let me not say younger, the newer nurses are not critically thinking that was a major issue for me because number one you guys are uh the gatekeepers or you guys are responsible for people's lives so in order to be an effective nurse no matter what clinical position or clinical um floor you're on you have to be able to use your critical thinking skills so i'm going to try to talk through through some things and hopefully it's beneficial for you let me know in the comments if you have any questions if it was beneficial if I was doing too much well don't get rude because I don't talk disrespect tolerate disrespect but you know what I'm saying let's just form a community to help the the newer nurses and bridge this gap between the newer nurses and the seasoned nurses okay so I know a lot of COVID is going on and the stress is high and the amount of work and the amount of patient loads that you guys have it is high Okay, so I understand that, but you still have to use critical thinking. So first, I'm going to start off by saying, number one, know your patient. What do I mean by know your patient? You need to be listening and report. Not that the person who gives you report is like the best person ever, but listen to your report. Make sure you're checking your charts for any missed orders, for any updates. Know your lab values, okay? When you, if you are newer and you are having a hard time just holistically understanding this patient, you may have to come a little bit early to understand your assignment or understand the patients that are in your assignment. Or you may have to stay a little bit late to chart. Don't feel any kind of way. I know y'all are burnt out and everything, but remember these are people's lives that you are dealing with. So you need to know these patients, okay? And do not be afraid to ask questions. I know these, sometimes these seasoned nurses can be a handful, but you know, it's okay to have a little snarkiness compared to having somebody cold, okay? So you guys, don't be afraid to ask questions, check your policy and procedures, refer to your lip and cost or you, whatever you have on your unit, refer to your nurse educators. That is what they are there for, okay? So let me give an example, because I like to give examples to drive it home. When I say knowing your patient, you need to know what the admitting diagnosis is. If you are getting a patient and this patient came in with DKA and maybe they um, were able to control their sugars, you know, with insulin and um, oral medication, and then the patient is all of a sudden becoming lethargic or not speaking or something is wrong, their affect is a little bit off, your first thought should be, oh, my patient came, well, this patient came in with that with a diabetic DKA or hyperglycemia, let me check their sugar, okay? You have to critically think about the patients that you're taking care of, okay? Also, say for instance, I know this is something, now this 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 skill may have to come a little bit later, not really, but your, hypoxi, your hypoxic patients. Sometimes your hypoxic patients can present a little bit abstract. So you may have a patient who's like, you might think like, child, he's crazy. Like, what's wrong with him? He's acting crazy. But maybe he came in with asthma or respiratory distress. If that person is starting to act a little crazy and out of sorts, you or maybe even your these these all this also could apply to your anemic patients because they're losing blood and their oxygen is low they will start to act 
out of sorts. You need to intervene. Don't just chump it off as that person is being crazy, okay? So critically think through these patients. Trust your nursing gut, okay? Another tip to critically think is to do your assessments. Too many times, and this is nothing new, because this was happening back in my day when I was on the floor from the time I started nursing until the time I left the floor, even to the day, sometimes even in what I do, people are not doing their assessments, okay? People are just charting what the nurse before them did, and that, number one, is wrong. It is uh, illegal, and also, you are doing a disservice to your patients, okay? Y number one, I know y'all doing bedside reports. That is where you should be doing what my nursing teacher used to call your across the room assessment. We, back in my day, we was like your ABCs. You're, you're looking at them, making sure their their airway is, is clear, making sure they're breathing right. They're not breathing too fast, breathing too slow. They're not like taking deep breath. You need to be looking at that. This is across the room. Their circulation. What does their color look like? Is the patient blue? Is the patient darkened? What is going on when you just look at your patient, okay? Do your assessments, your head to toe assessments, especially for my, well, all nurses. There's no, it's no specialty too good to do a head to toe assessment because these things can give you clues. If your your patient has particular, you need to be trying to figure out why. But if you don't, if you haven't done your head to toe assessment, you may never know if that patient has that. Or maybe your patient has um, some type of wounds breakdown that maybe it's leaking. You know, one time I had a patient who I received, it was like a, they switched the assignment and the patient was coming back from um, dialysis or something and had like a big wound here and all of a sudden it was just bleeding everywhere. Okay, to the point where we had to put the sandbag, we was doing old school sandbags, pressure wraps, and it was not stopping. But I wouldn't have seen it if I didn't pull those covers back, covers back and do my head to toe assessment. That is crucial for you to be able to critically think and help your patient. And another thing that I'm going to mention is your is affect. Don't take people's affect. For granted especially if there is a change in affect there may be something wrong or something that you're missing you can have some a person could be having a stroke they could be becoming in respiratory distress they can have a lot of different issues when it comes to a change in their disposition or their affect so this is why it's so important to know your patient and do your assessments it gives you the ability to critically think um, and make sure you're intervening appropriately with your patients. Okay, so another tip that I'm gonna give you guys. I know this is like a real serious video, but I'm passionate about this because y'all, y'all, y'all can, y'all, it's, it's disheartening the amount of seasoned nurses that say that critical thinking is lacking amongst the new nurses. And as y'all, nursing big sister, I can't have it. So I'm trying to, you know, make sure I drive this home with y'all. Also, so. Non-invasive measures. Okay, so t typically we tend to the 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 knee-jerk reaction is to to go for the gusto when it comes to intervening with your patients. You know, sometimes you may be like, oh my gosh, I want to call a rapid response. I want to do this. You should do that. But you also should be trying non-invasive measures too. Sometimes you have a patient that's running a fever. But they've been up under them covers all day. Sir, ma'am, pull these covers back. Now, I'm not talking about your through the roof fevers. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your little low grade temps. So maybe they like at 101 or hanging at 102. Pull them covers back. Pull those covers back. Give them, if they are not NPO, give them some chill liquids. Put them some ice packs. Like, we got to get back to doing some non invasive measures too because y'all are under a lot of pressure and a lot of things, a lot of critical, a lot of little things, critical, think, critical thinking things can help remedy the situations that you are in. Now, by no means am I telling you not to call rapid response or not to call a cold when you need to, but I'm telling you to be critically thinking at all times because somebody's life is dependent on it. So, that is my video for today. I know that was pretty heavy, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it. Please drop it in the comments. Most importantly, I want you to know that I love you, but God loves you so much more. God bless you.